know is, we want you to know everything that we know from the city about this plan, so that you're not thinking, it's not hearsay, it's not some people told you this, staff told you that. We have had meetings with the city council, we've had meetings with the mayor, so anything we tell you pretty much comes from them. It's not our good ideas, although we have many. I guess the first part we want to say is we want to thank everyone here for your support, for showing up. Clearly, if you're here, you care about this park. One of the things we're trying to impress upon the city is this is not your average park. This is not a park that people pass by and maybe stop in. This is a park that people use as if it were their own home. They come here on a daily basis, and it's, 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 it's the heart of our community. First of all, I should have done to begin with is introduce myself. I'm Kathy Blavis, and my partner in crime in terms of, I guess, getting the ball rolling is Stephanie Harker. Um, and I mean that literally. We kind of just got the ball rolling, and then all this happened. And this happened because of neighbors on our block, and this happened because of all of you. We'd like to introduce a gentleman here, Carlton Cronin who is a resident of West Hollywood for over 40 years. Over 40 years. I'd say it's before I was born, but I'd be lying. Um, <laughs> and I read a piece that he wrote in the WeHo News, and I was so impressed by it that I spoke with the editor of the WeHo News to see if we could have him just come and chat with us. So I, I turned the megaphone over to Mr. Cronin. I've never used one of these before, so uh, you'll have to bear with me. Uh, some people are easily intrigued by what I write, but I'm pleased that it struck a chord here. And I'm uh, equally pleased to see the generational spread. We have babies here, we have elderly people, we have everybody in between. And this is the kind of park the city needs. It doesn't need a chrome-plated building. That doesn't need an underground parking structure. The, the title of my little essay was called Sweeping History Under the Architect's Table. And if you'd like to find some of the details, you can go to wehonews.com and look it up. But what I covered were the wonderful WPA buildings. A lot of thought went into putting these up. They have charm. And charm is a very short supply these days. Where can we find charm? We can find it from a park. Yeah. And charm leads us to a phrase I like to use, it's called comfort and ease. It's a place we can come and feel much at ease here. Uh, the city, <laughs> since its beginnings, has pretty much forged ahead, and I think they forgot what their, what their beginnings were. Uh, we have a city council for many years, which just took the bit in its teeth and ran with their programs. You can go to every meeting and make comments, but if you don't get feedback, you don't get some kind of response from the city, then where do your comments go? They go in the toilet, quite simply. People are not, pay they're not paying attention at City Hall. They have also hired people who will do just about anything they want them to do. And I believe the citizens are being really short shrift. Uh, I'm winding down anyhow. I wanted to just say that this is the beginning, I think, of other things as well. Not just the uh, yes. protest to come apart. We have all over the country uh, demonstrations of how government has run away with the, with, the, with the whole idea of democracy. And if you don't have input, democracy doesn't work. So I have some suggestions. You can go to meetings and make comments. That's wonderful.
Thank you, Cronin, uh, Cronin, Carlton Cronin. Thank you, Eugene, for translating. Uh, we'd like to uh, go over just a few of the points that there have been some confusion on. And again, you, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes. We had the sound coming, but with the rain, they didn't want to chance their equipment out, so we forgive them. Uh, first of all, we had said to the city council and to the mayor, we had not heard about this, certainly not to the extent that they say, but we say, we don't want this plan, and they say, but we had meetings. I don't care how many meetings you had, if you don't listen to the people who come to those meetings and take into consideration what people who use this park want, it doesn't matter if you had 250 meetings. This obviously has a large, a vital, and wonderful Russian community. Yay! When I first came here, I came to this park, I moved in across the street, and I came over here and there was a man playing Russian music on a balalaika, and I realized <laughs> that English was not the first language of this park, and it was charming. Yes. Uh, we have been told half-truths. We, we, they call it Plummer Park Project Phase 1. Well, there really isn't a Phase 2. They just wanted us to think that they were going to s shut off sections of the park. <laughs> I've just been told that may not be true either. But our impression was that they were going to close off Fiesta Hall and do whatever they were going to do with it. They were going to close off this section and do whatever they were going to do with it. But we went to their own mitigation plan meeting and we found out that they were planning on putting an eight-foot fence up around most of the usable area. We also found out at some point in their years of planning that the underground parking that they were going to put in under the current parking lot on Santa Monica Boulevard had been moved. That was not made clear to anyone. When people agreed to this and thought, what a great idea, we'll put the parking under the parking lot. We put grass on top. Swell! Well, it seems to have moved north and will run from behind Fiesta Hall all the way to the north tennis court, which wow. underground necessitating the removal, the destruction of 54 of our heritage trees. All of the trees that you see will be coming down. They are trying to box 80 of them. But what they didn't put in, they say how many trees were here, how many we will have at the end when they put new trees in. However, they were being not the same shade for 17 years. That is their hopeful estimation. But they are not replacing 54 of the old trees. Uh, we should probably move along a little quicker here. Um, we... What we are, at the stage we are at now, we feel we, our main point, regardless of the design, regardless of how they want to mitigate it or make it easier on us to deal with this for the next almost two years. They had said to us, we had no intention of shutting down this park for two years. And then the next line says, it's 22 months. <laughs> so, uh, what we need, the message we need to get across to them now is stop this plan. Stop, stop this, this plan. plan. Stop, stop this plan. Stop this plan. Stop this plan. We'll be able to save our historic buildings, even in their own environmental impact report the draft version, these two buildings you see behind me, Great Hall, Long Hall, the, the California Environmental, or Environmental Quality Act stated that it was a significant adverse impact and there was no mitigation for it. We could not make it better. I invite everyone from City Hall, but I don't Why? believe anyone showed up. Why you don't invite it? Uh, and I believe uh, in, in on the news last night, they were on the Kathy and Stephanie show on CBS. Uh, they, CBS did try to contact the city officials, but they got no response. So again, 
I think they feel that they know they made a mistake. They're trying to press on with this to uh, have parking that my suspicion is, it's only a suspicion, I'm not stating this as fact, my suspicion is they want to rent those 69 extra spaces or promise those 69 extra spaces to new businesses and new buildings going up in the area. They are not for the public's use. They will not be for the park goers' use. And most park goers like to walk to their local park anyway. So um, the, the bottom line, folks, is they're spending $41.3 million on this when people in this town, like everywhere else, are starving and homeless. We don't think it's a good use of the city's money. Um, they've told, told us, well, it's tax increments they're going to pay for it. Sure, you can pay for it, but you've indebted the entire city by $125 million overall, and we think the money could be put to better use. Thank you.